Hello everyone and welcome to Big Orange Biology with Mr. Jennings. I'm Mr. Jennings and today we're going to talk to you about biological macromolecules. Now biological macromolecules are rather large molecules that you have covered before in your general biology class. Now as this is an AP biology video, we are just going to review some basic terminology but also expand on how these macromolecules are actually formed. So let's go over some basic terms. First off, a macromolecule. Now a macromolecule is just a, another word for a rather large molecule. Macro meaning large. Uh, in biology we like to stick to four macromolecules we explore. That is carbs, proteins, lipids, and nucleic acids. Now each of these are so diverse and so important and I have no time really to talk about in this video. We're going to talk about each of those on their own on their own video in the near future. But each of those are very important. So let's talk about some other key terms. So monomer is another key term that comes up when we talk about macromolecules. Monomer is just a fancy way of saying a single subunit. It is the single thing that builds these rather large macromolecules. Now, to go along with monomer, we have polymer. Now, polymers are these rather large chains. They're not necessarily the macromolecules themselves, but for the most part, they can be viewed that way. These are the large chains of monomers linked together to make an overall rather large polymer. Now, next up, we're going to talk about some other terms. Structure. Now, everybody knows what structure is. It's what something looks like. It's how it's built. And you're not wrong. But we need to talk about how that relates to biology. Now, structure of a macromolecule is how that macromolecule is built and how it's arranged. Structure is important because structure is what determines function. So the structure of a compound is going to determine how that compound is going to behave. Because in chemistry, and specifically biochemistry, it, structures can have the exact same chemical formula, but be arranged slightly different. And because they're arranged slightly different, you get completely different functions. And we're going to expand more on those later. But these things that look the same chemically, but are behaving completely different, are called structural isomers. These are such a big deal that in organic chemistry, the chemistry that we've been talking about, we don't even use chemical formulas like you did in chemistry class or general physical science. We use structural formulas, these rather complex looking stick and dot diagrams. Now, structure is important, but so is function, another key term here. Now, the function can be simply defined as what something does. But it's not that easy because really the function is ultimately going to be determined by the structure. And when it comes to macromolecules, the structure of that macromolecule has a different function because each of the macromolecules we talk about have their own different subclass. So for instance, there's multiple types of carbohydrates. There's multiple types of nucleic acids. There's multiple types of proteins. There's multiple type of lipids. And each of those are structured differently and they function differently as a result. So it's very important to understand the function of each of these types of macromolecules. And lastly, a terminology we like to use called functional groups. Now, functional groups is something completely new for the most part to you, unless you had a really good chemistry teacher. But functional groups are these small groups of atoms that are found throughout nature consistently together. Phosphate is a great example of this. It's PO4, or sometimes PO3 if it's in a bonded situation. These are commonly polyatomic ions, if you want to get into that field. But these functional groups provide different functions. They're kind of like these modular pieces that you can snap on to a macromolecule that causes that macromolecule to inherit a completely different function. So for instance, some functional groups are polar. So if you slap a bunch of polar functional groups all over on a macromolecule, that macromolecule is going to have polar regions. But you can also throw nonpolar regions. You're going to be polar and nonpolar in completely different locations. And that is something we're going to explore later. Now, functional groups themselves is a very complicated topic. And one that will be explored greatly in a further, further video. At least the key ones that we talk about in biology. 
I want to actually talk about how these molecules are formed. Now, macromolecules are these rather large molecules. We talked about some of the terminology, but let's talk about how we make these things. Because remember, cells are not going to keep their resources tied up in these resource intensive molecules all the time. A protein requires a tremendous amount of what we call amino acids. You can't keep all your amino acids tied up in one protein. Hey, what if it happens if you ingest some new food? You gotta break it down. And what if you need to build a new protein? You need to have ways to do that. So cells, they do not want to keep their resources tied up, but at the same time, they need these new large molecules frequently. So cells have developed a, a consistent and clear way to make macromolecules and also disassemble them. So the way they make them is commonly done through a process called dehydration synthesis. You can probably guess what this deals with. But dehydration synthesis is when you remove an OH off of one monomer and a hydrogen off another monomer. And when you pull them off, it creates two open slots. And in the process, you make water. So essentially, you have pulled water out of a compound. You dehydrated it. When you do that, you create two open slots. And those two open slots come together, link up, and they form a chain. So this monomer is now starting to become a polymer. And you can repeat this process for as long as you have monomers. Uh, the long repetitive process of doing this to create polymers is a whole science of itself called polymer chemistry. Really interesting field. If you're interested in it, plastics. That's where it's at. Now, I'm going to need to say here, dehydration synthesis is also commonly called condensation reactions or condensation synthesis. Those are both valid terms, and different textbooks will call that the same thing. College Board refers to it as dehydration synthesis, so as such, we are going to call it that. How do you break these big molecules down? We do so with the exact opposite way. Now, this is not always true, but the most common way to break down a large polymer is just to add water. If removing water makes a polymer, adding water should reverse it. And for the most part, that is true. Sounds weird. Uh, now, factors like polarity and such do come into play here. But you can add water. And to some extent, you will break down a polymer. And you will basically reverse it. So the polymer breaks back down into its individual monomers. This is, again, easier said than done. And often needs to be aided with other chemical agents. And the very, very basic process, you just add water. And this whole process is called hydrolysis, or hydrolysis, whichever one you want to pronounce it, tomato, tomato. However, adding water will, with some help, break down polymers into monomers. So at the end of the day, we've talked about the key terms, and we've talked about how these molecules are formed. This video here is to serve as a basic introduction to macromolecules, some key terms and kind of things form. The subsequent videos after this will be dealing with the more intricate details. First one up being carbohydrates. And we're going to talk about how carbs are formed, their individual functions, their monomers and such. It's a very diverse field and is very intuitively complex. With that said, I bid you all adieu. It is time to wrap it up. Thank you for watching. This has been Big Orange Biology. I am Mr. Jennings. I'm hoping you all have a great day.